This sartorial will tell you about flow cytometers, how they work, and why they're important in today's research and clinical environments. So, what is flow cytometry? It's a great question, and you might think it all sounds Greek. Oddly enough, it is Greek. The word cyto means cell or vessel, and the word metry or ometry means measurement. So when we put the two together, we get cytometry, the measurement of cells. Now, you're almost an expert, but what sort of cells can these instruments look at? Well, that's also a great question. Any cell that you can suspend in a liquid, for example, it might be a bacteria taken from a culture dish like your favorite Staph aureus. Or possibly it could be a plant cell taken from a lettuce or a tree, a leaf. Or maybe it could be cells taken from cell cultures in someone's laboratory. Or it could be cells taken from your blood, just like the nurse takes your blood for examination when you visit the doctor. What is important to understand is that a flow cytometer is an instrument that can evaluate every single cell. Each cell is in a suspension as it flows through a special chamber and passes by a powerful laser. The signals that come from each cell are collected by a computer and they're plotted on a screen like this graph. And from this, scientists are able to derive a whole lot of information about the size, the shape, and some special properties of the cells if the cells have been labeled with tags called fluorescent labeled antibodies. For example, Let's say that we wanted to know how many CD4 positive T cells were in someone's blood. First, we would take the blood, process it, and then run it through a flow cytometer and read the result. We do this by looking at all sorts of complicated graphs. But as you can easily see from this graph that there are certain populations, and I've circled one of them, and we can use those populations to find out much more information about them. And that's not all. One of the most amazing things about flow cytometers is that you can physically separate a few cells from millions. And that process is called cell sorting. Now, much of our knowledge about cells was developed by a scientist by the name of Len Herzenberg at Stanford University, who built an instrument specifically designed to work on white blood cells. He could identify special cells and then put an electrical charge on them and separate them into a test tube. This process allows scientists to study many of the properties of cells. In fact, a single cell can be extracted and that cell can be put under a microscope or studied using many different technologies. Flow cytometers are used in lots of places such as university labs, biotechnology companies, pharmaceutical companies and hospitals. They are critical technologies in our research environments and they help us develop cures for cancer, for inflammatory diseases, to create vaccines and to study bacterial diseases and they're also useful in learning about plant systems.